What's up, y'all? It's Ashley. I'm Fee. It's Melody. And Cody here. And you've tapped into The, the Mama's, Mama's Den. Den. What up, what up, what up? Hi. What up, y'all? Welcome Hello. back. Yeah. Y'all, I- guess who I saw in the parking lot? At who? nine something who? morning. Santa who? Claus. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a Christmas miracle, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> It was me, Melody. <laughs> I, the one who was always just, you know, a, a few minutes Say short of it early. Ain't so. Um, I'm sorry. Always what? late. Always Is that late. how you call that? Always late, <laughs> Ashley. Let me be accountable for myself. Wait, okay? what did you say? What did she, she say? Said a few minutes short, short of early. early. Mm-hmm. This is a nice way to put late. Um, okay. I was so early today. I was so proud of myself because <laughs> it's 2024 and I'm sick of being late because. It's bad for your nervous system. Mm-hmm. It's really, yeah. And life is just hard enough and our nervous system is already. So like I've planned to be very proactive. And like even if I'm super early, it will give me more time if I need to do anything. So now when we record, I take Cameron to school and then I just go straight. I love that. Like come because it could take me two hours, mm. which is crazy. But because <laughs> we're in a new location. But the blessing that I have experienced now is – it makes me take the coast from where I live. Aww. So I get to ride the canyon oh, and the cute. coast. So I get to ride through the mountains so and I pretty. get to see the ocean every time I come to the studio that's now. Oh, and it's like, lovely. it's that actually nice. such a nice gift because the 405 drives me mm-hmm. back. Yeah. You guys know, even it's when stressful. it was at the other studio, I'd be like, y'all, I'm sitting in nonstop, non moving traffic. always a story, child. 101 and the 405, <laughs> those two friends, they are not my friends. So now I don't even have to really see them and I really appreciate that. <laughs> Remember when the mountain fell on you when you were yeah. coming? No, the for world. real, every day. It was always some crazy I, story, like no, a mountain it. fell. I, she, I, and then she took I, a picture of the I mountain falling in front of her. We were, about this the other day, there was one day where <laughs> Ashley was like, she gonna come in here and she gonna be like, so the moon yep. like, got in the way and yep. I couldn't yep. drive around it. Yep. And, <laughs> and you y'all walked in me. like two minutes later y'all and you were like, she's like, y'all. You're not gonna believe what happened. Y'all don't know when you and live. And then God as, came down and stopped when you everything. Live as far as I do, they're listen, on the rain. All kinds, the all fell on kinds. You even too. today, when I was like, "Oh Lord, I gotta take the canyon. We're gonna see you in the rain." Oh, but it was, it's actually not the back streets that told me to take that time. There was no boulders. There were some mudslides. Okay. But you know, I drive a Defender, so. All, all right, girl. We be trucking through these terrains. But I do want to say, but you, you saying that it helps your nervous system, like that's 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 a good. No, look. it that re- is, it yeah. really does. It really really does. And honestly, the fact that I get to see the ocean, mm-hmm. that actually is something I'm very very excited about. Yeah. So I know once a week, whether it's raining or not, mm-hmm. I get to see the ocean, and that's the blessing as to why we live in California. So yes, that, ocean, that is a good drive. It's pretty. In terms of um. Being in nature, are you like, do you feel most connected to God in spaces of like ocean, being by trees? Like, what is your, each, mm-hmm. everybody, this is a question for everybody. What is your like, I feel most connected to God when I'm in this type of environment of nature? Water. Yeah. When um, I am by the yeah. ocean, I feel so small mm. and I feel overwhelmed. Like, mm. I feel like, like almost a little like scared. Yeah. Yeah. But not scared in a way like, oh my God, the world is going to end. More so, like, scared, like, I am so insignificant in this moment. Yep. Yeah, and so this grand. vastness yeah. of things that exist that's far beyond anything I can comprehend. Yeah. You know, there's so much out there that just is unknown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, girl. And that's, like, a metaphor for life, too. But that's really what it is. And, like, I, like, the ocean just, I what don't know. What are you, Cody? Same. Fully ocean. water. I am a water person. Mm. Like, give me the ocean any day. Interesting. I mean, you? No, yeah. I feel the most connected to God, like, on in tree me too girl <laughs> sorry i guess I we just over here it. sailing in no, the ocean you know what's crazy i feel the most at peace and calm um when i'm like in trees and hiking mm-hmm. and i feel feel the most fearful of god in water mm-hmm. and it's not a bad fear but it is a fear of a grand uh, understanding that like we really have no power. Yeah. God is the most powerful. There is so much in the ocean that we don't even know exists. Yep. And it's so beyond me. It overwhelms my whole entire spirit. And I'll be like, eh. Yeah, I'm not like I in feel it. the I'm same way. I'm near it when I'm appreciating it. When oh, I'm I in always it, appreciate it, but I don't feel, you know, like when I'm in it, I get overwhelmed too. too. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, no. but I feel like that's, I feel most connected there. But then in water, it literally the same as I can Yeah, it's say. like an overwhelming. Maybe that's why people get baptized in water, though. It's like mm. you need to understand the depths and the understanding of God. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Maybe maybe we need to be in water more. I think I need to be in water more. No, this thank is you. telling me I need to explore a little more. Mm-mm. But, and I mean, push, push Peace past. recently got baptized. Peace got baptized right. recently, and she was so excited. Um, so we go to church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. I grew up in the church, but I feel like as I – moved to Hollywood, you know, you start doing other things. 
but I've always had a very deep relationship with God. And the more and more that we started going back to church, the more that I saw her kind of gravitating towards just her own personal relationship. It was less about what mommy's telling you to do and more about her connection. Even if there's times that I was feeling overwhelmed, mm -hmm. peace, it, well, both of them, but mainly peace is like, mom, I think you just need to go pray. Like, I think you just need to go take a moment. And obviously that's something that I tell them as well. But them learning in Sunday school and all of that, she had her own little conviction. And so one day she came up to me and she was like, mom, I'm ready to get baptized. And I asked her why. And she gave me the correct, I guess you would say the correct meaning on why, you know, you need to get baptized mm -hmm. or why you get baptized. And then we went to church and we told them, and then she took like this little class, and yeah, so she got she got baptized. It was like, oh, are you okay? Yeah, how old is Pete? <laughs> what, <laughs> what is, is going that? on with your Did eyes? Did y'all see that? Yes, is Ashley awake? I don't know. Is there something in your eye? My eyelash oh. got in my eye. Okay. <laughs> are you going to be okay? Should we get a microscope? And no, I'm fine. It's okay. it's going to move its way on out of my. It's just in my eye, and I have nails, so like yeah. I can't dig in there and get it out the way mm -hmm. I want. Do you need someone to blow in your eye? Oh God, no. We got, We're happy to. We'll take turns. We got turns. bagel. <laughs> you take stay, this breath. Do you want to stay friends? Or right. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, oh, but how old is Peace? Peace is nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you got baptized? Ooh, I got baptized when I was, mm, I think, like 19. Okay. Yeah. Has I, every, later. Is everyone here baptized? I took my shahada, so, you know, I'm Muslim. But I never got baptized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it weird I don't remember? No, were no. you a baby? Were you at some people I, doing I, I was sure a baby. I was a baby. Yeah. Yes. yes, I was. I was. But I was literally. Yeah. Yes, I was christened. Boom. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. And I, I think that's funny. Is there's like a beautiful photo of my sisters christening mm -hmm. with our whole family. You oh. did like a and fancy like, white dress. Huh? Where's my photo? No, my sister's older. I wasn't Second there. Second born. Mm. Huh? Second born. Let me come and call my mom. I'll be back. <laughs> right, mom. Did I? She like yeah, baby. Now. No. Yeah, girl. You good. You good. You good with the Lord. I had to decide between getting baptized and taking my shahada because you know I went to church and the mosque and I decided to take my shahada instead. That's how it is too. Because even when I was sharing it on my Instagram, a lot of people were like, "Oh, I, you know, I got it was the christening, which is typically like when you're Catholic, but then when you're Christian, it's our whole belief is you wait until you have a relationship with God and you can be like Jesus is King, Jesus is Lord, like this is." you make your own decision yeah. you know yeah. mm -hmm. so the fact that peace wanted to do that at such a young age i was like cool and then to see the other little kids too just like all the little black and brown babies mm -hmm. and they're all like yeah i'm excited i'm like this is so cute do you, but it's dope i have a question though do you mm -hmm. feel like she was old enough to fully fully grasp or understand that like her doing that do you do you know what i mean like my mom mm -hmm. said she wished that she was older when she got baptized because she got baptized as a little girl too. Yeah. And she said that she wished that she could have made, like she was older because she was like, I probably wouldn't have done it. Hmm. That mm -hmm. that was just her feeling. And I'm not saying that the piece is going to have that yeah, feeling, yeah. but do you think that there should be a certain age to get baptized or just based on your child and their level of understanding and maturity? I think it's that part. Mm -hmm. I've seen, there's been times that peace has had, her moments where she's like, mom, I've been praying about this and wouldn't tell me that she was doing this oh, wow. and would come and tell me like, this is the thing that happened. And I feel like it's because I was talking to God. Mm -hmm. So she has literally her whole individual yeah. relationship. Again, she sees the way that I move. She sees how her father moves and how we really bring everything back to God always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that had she not had that, then I would be like, yeah, no. Like if yeah. Zen came to me and was like, mom, I want to get baptized. <laughs> I'll probably be it. like, yeah, I'll probably be like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And he's always like, I don't want to go to church. I don't like to go. I was <laughs> like, Aquarius, you know what kids right? you going to be. Yeah. My mom was too. That's oh, yeah. not their thing. My, my baby. Wait, but Organized. And I just don't remember. Yeah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> it was, is your mom Muslim now? Yeah, so my like, mom is, um, no, she, uh, yes, I don't know. Because I'm like trying to understand, I'm none trying of my to business. remember. I don't know. You have to ask her. She okay. was um, like raised Catholic, yeah. Christian, she Catholic Christian. She got mm -hmm. had, she got a christening and she then got baptized as she got older. And then she became Muslim in college. So we would do a, the Sabbath on Friday, Saturday. It, it, I don't know. So my mom, I think she would probably not identify as a religion right we probably did 90 percent primarily muslim things yeah. but we still went to like the temple we would go to the jewish temple we would go to the Hare krishnas and watch them like and worship and stuff with their tambourines and sing all their songs and stuff and then we, she would take us to um a lot of like native american ceremonies and stuff so mm -hmm. i don't know she's like a, wo a woman of the world now i feel, know, I feel now that now we 100%. know the conversation when she comes back yeah, yeah. what do you, what do you feel 
Is there one particular, because you were so exposed to mm -hmm. so many different religious practices, mm -hmm. is there something that you feel really resonates with you totally? So it's hard because it's like a very hard conversation to have sometimes because people are very protective of religion as if they are the ones who can make the rules and then they get mad. So mm -hmm. don't be saying nothing in my inbox. <laughs> um, but I will always say I'm Muslim because to say you're Muslim means that you believe in one God for everyone. And it also remember, means that you're also like following the teachings of Muhammad. Um, but the religion is Islam. But there's a lot of beautiful things that I still take. Like I still participate in Ramadan and I still do Christmas and I talk to my children about Jesus and I love Jesus and Muhammad. And I feel like all the teachings are important. And we, mm -hmm. we still talk about like practicing um, Buddhism and all of that too. Like that's just how my household is, but we're not religious, but I go to church. Like Nala got baptized and I went to mm -hmm. church and I was crying and Chia was like, you are the strangest woman I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I just cannot put a finger on you. And I was like, anytime Aww. that someone's talking about God, it's going to move me. I don't care who's talking about it. Cause it's it. not that it's not that, like you said, it's not the religion part. No. It's the connection to God. And I think that yeah. that's where people get caught up. It's yes. like, Oh, well it's this or that. And it's like, I believe it's one and there's many avenues that yes. people, yeah. yes. it's like, you don't have, I just feel like, how am I to tell somebody that how they were raised and where they were raised is like, this is what you're doing is wrong. It's Girl. like, that's not my place. I mean, I echo <laughs> all of that. I mean, from the standpoint, we talked about this before, how I read conversations with God when I was in high uh, college mm -hmm. and I grew up in the church, going to church every Sunday. It was very much like a family ritual. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed it or I enjoyed like that Sunday ritual, right? Going to my grandparents' house and having breakfast. We went to Sunday school. Then we went to church, mm -hmm. like the, the church service. Um, but ultimately, when my parents got divorced, we didn't do it as much. Um, and so it was through, I dated someone who was super religious. Mm. And through, when I went to college, I read Conversations with God. And it just helped put in perspective a lot of things for me. Mm -hmm. Specifically, what you were just saying about, um, there's so many of us. And we have, what we can have, or the church has, or at least when I used to go, <laughs> this perspective of like a judgmental God right like even heaven or hell yeah and like oh he's gonna send you somewhere yeah. for like making yeah. for sinning yeah. well there's a lot of sins out here and there's a lot of people like and in the church will have you believe that one is worse yeah. than the other and i shouldn't say the church like you know in its the entirety people who are running those churches. yeah them the human beings certain churches <laughs> exactly. and certain uh -huh. people running churches and so what i experienced i think going to church in fort worth texas and then going to church in dc and even la like what i experienced ultimately was sometimes this like really beautiful high of mm. celebrating God mm -hmm. and, 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 and people and community. And then sometimes these lows of things that were said where I was like, mm -hmm, like yeah. cringe. Yeah. Yeah. And so conversations with God just helped put in perspective that like the relationship that I have with him is what matters to me. Cause mm -hmm. all right. these things that the humans are saying, yeah. right. <laughs> it's just not adding up for right. real. And so, I mean that honestly, that book like changed my life because it made that very clear for me. Um, and after a while I stopped going because mm -hmm. like next was LA. So I, I read that in DC. Then I moved to LA and I went to my aunt's church and I just felt there were just messages I could not align yep. with. I could not yeah. sit there for an hour and a half, two hours or whatever and be like, Ugh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about the kids? Do you like, do they, uh, do they have interest in religion or spiritual? So Brooks beliefs? has on his own, which is interesting. And yeah. obviously it's come from somewhere, but we have, Tommy and I made a commitment essentially to teach them about all religions would be strong, but specifically Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, mm -hmm. um, because we figured those would be what they would encounter the, mo the most. And um, so it was just important to us to acknowledge the holidays and to try to teach them whatever we can. Sometimes we know, sometimes we get in a book and we're like, okay, so this is what Ramadan is. Do you remember yeah. when you called me and uh, Brooks was asking me questions yes. about Islam? Oh, yeah. So cute. Aww. Brooks said so something so to me about Islam, and I was like, I don't know the answer, but let's call Ashley. <laughs> yeah. And she explained it to him. And so, like, it's just really important to me that they're aware and that yes. they're like accepting and loving of others. Yeah. Um, we even bought, I love to, I love the brand a kid's book about. Yeah, mm -hmm. you oh, do, yeah. girl. They have, I know, I really you do. You should really put some, buy I, some stock They should in pay it. me they because absolutely should. I have <laughs> like 30 of these books um, and they have a ton of subjects, but the most recent ones I bought were a kid's book about, uh, I think it's the God, not Christianity, but a kid's book about God, Islam, and um, Judaism. Oh, cute. And, I also like to read these things in advance and so decide when it's time to share right. them because, you know, it just depends on the age. But I think there's a lot of resources out there for us to just, like, inform our children mm -hmm. and ourselves. And so that's the approach that Tommy and I have taken. Mm -hmm. I like that. What about you, Mel? So I went to Catholic school growing up. 
it never resonated with me. And now, mind you, Catholic school in Canada is not like uniforms and nuns and all this stuff. Like, it, it's basically a public school where we start the day with prayer. Oh. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. pretty it's much pretty what chill. it was. And then we have, yeah. it's very, it was <laughs> very chill. Well, it sounds like also, a regular day to me. <laughs> also, yeah, also across the, 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 um, the parking lot, there was a church as affiliated with our, mm. yeah. our school. Oh, so cute. if we had church or service or confession or whatever it was, we just walk across the parking lot and we do that. As, and that was like a, a thing for I class. But it was that. I never like going to church. Yeah. It's never a thing. My mom is Catholic. My dad is Muslim. Mm. And ironically, we used to go to church as a family. And my dad would <laughs> my dad would just come and just be there. And so that actually gave me this like scope of, oh, you don't need to like believe in what is believing here to show up to support Period. the people that you love. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, yeah. and then when there was a time when my dad was like, you know what? I'm not going to church anymore. Mm. And then that gave the autonomy for my brother and I to be like, we're not going to church anymore. Yeah, we've been <laughs> waiting on one of y'all. Mama Donna would never. Mama yeah. Donna, oh, she tried. She's like, y'all children ain't gonna, he's a grown man, blah, blah, blah. And then finally, it was just like, mom, we don't want to go. Yeah, like, we don't want to, we, yeah. This was like 12, 13. And yeah. I remember, like, I was like, mom, I don't, I don't want to go anymore. Yeah. And she was tight. She was so mad that we didn't want to go with her to church anymore. But I was just like, mom, we don't want to go. Like, yeah. we would rather sleep in this morning. Mm -hmm. This is what we want to do. And so she would go to church and she'd be pissed that we weren't there. And then eventually she just settled into it. Now, it's interesting because my dad is Muslim. And my dad's parents were also Muslim and Catholic. Oh, mm. cute. Oh. Yeah, Christian, actually, my grandma there. So they broke all the rules in that way as yeah. well. So I've always had this exposure to mixed practices, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, where like, um, we would do readings like Quran Sharif and like, you know, readings at the play at our house. If there was a wedding, there would be a Muslim wedding and then a Catholic wedding. Um, and my brother did that. But I think the thing for me is that after I left home, I started, I think, I think realizing that even through being exposed to both of those practices or, or religious beliefs, it didn't connect me to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Right. It didn't connect me to God. Like I didn't actually understand the purpose of what that was. Yeah. And so I didn't actually find my connection to God until I was on my own mm -hmm. as an adult being like, this is something in your life that is missing. Girl. Yeah. Like you have exposure, you have like, I believed in God. It wasn't that, but it's like, how do you implement that in your life? How do you acknowledge that? How do you empower yourself with that? I didn't, nobody had those conversations with me. I felt like what I was doing was going through the motions of where I was mm -hmm. more so than actually being taught about the, um, it, I guess growing up in those environments, I felt more of like the judgment space of it. Yeah. yeah. You have to do this and you have to live this, not more so than like this relationship of what it is. Like even going to confession, mm -hmm. like going into this place and being like, Girl. oh, I'm going to be absolved of all of my sins because I told the priest. Like, and I'm not, I'm not being, I don't mean to, for this to sound disrespectful. It's different for, though. For me, yeah. you know, yeah, for me, different. I really was like, wait a second, like, that's it? Like, yeah. like somebody just tell me that God is loving and all forgiving. Let me practice this on my own. Yep, right. You know, not, not feel this the, random not feel man the shame. in a booth. Girl. Yeah, not feel the shame of what this comes with. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> and then your friends are looking at you when you come out and be like, what'd you say? Did you tell them about? And it's like, wait a second, Wait, what? wait, you like, girl, I told you that. Safe space, <laughs> safe space. Like, exactly. you hold on, girl. You, you know what I mean? Like, kids last week. It's, it's, Did you it's, tell them? Because I told them. It's really, it's really one of those things. So I feel like as I got older, I, I I understood spirituality and I yeah. understood um, I understood my relationship with God and understanding the the power of connectivity in everything that mm -hmm. God is in everything for yep. me. Yeah. So it's interesting when you talk about the kids because Cameron naturally has very much always been a very intuitive, spiritually connected child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most recently in the last few years, he's been asking a lot about like Jesus. Mm. So there's like in our neighborhood, there's ironically like a church and a Jewish temple literally next door to each mm. other, which is really beautiful. Yeah, I, mean. I love that. And um, he was like, Can we go to church? And I was like, Yeah, let's go to church. So we took him to the church one day and <laughs> I love um, him. you know, he He's was great. like, It it. I, I felt again like a little just the community of people necessarily wasn't our community of people, yeah. but I was I was happy to be able to give my son the gift of I'm interested in this. Let me know. 100%. Like it can be anything. It's yeah. it's like I'm interested in Taekwondo. Okay, well let's go do a class. Yeah. Yep. You know, and I think that that's how I'm keeping it. But like even last night, he said something about a demon, something oh. he, he read, and I was like, well, what are you talking about demons? He's like, you know, demons and H E double hockey sticks. And I was like, hell, <laughs> so not the hockey stick. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where'd you learn this? All right, now like, really back like, in. Yeah, he, said, he said hell. And I was like, well, what do you mean, Cameron? And I, I just said to him, I was like, well, I don't believe in hell. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I said to him. Yeah. I was like, I don't believe in hell. 
And he says, well, I believe in heaven. Mm. And I said, okay. Right. You know, and I'm like, I want to be able to always create spaces for my children to be open to ask yeah. questions. Yeah. And for me to say comfortably what I what I respectfully believe or don't believe. Yeah. Because I don't want to disrespect anybody's belief. And I don't want it to try to, like, force Confuse my son. Them yeah. Too. yeah, unless it's racism. We're going to check racism yeah. at the door. Right, yeah. unless you're yeah. talking about uh, worshiping demons. Okay. Then okay. I got something to say. <laughs> right? But I, but I really, I really believe that it is a personal journey yeah. and i feel like our job as parents personally is just to is to allow our children to explore to yep. have questions and to provide spaces for them to learn about it on their own yeah. and to come to their own conclusions yeah. that's how i feel with the with peace when she said she wanted to get baptized and I told her dad, it was very much like, this is our child and this is what she wants to do. Let's help her to make sure she's making the right decision yeah. for her nine-year-old self, but supporting and being like, here, these are the resources. I think the number one reason why I personally love to go to church, I love to praise and worship. Me too, I love girl. to sing. <laughs> I love to stand there and cry with other people that are doing the same mm -hmm. thing. And then I also I love I love knowledge and I love listening to listening to like people speak. But that's like the main reason yeah, why yeah. I love to go. I love, it's, good, I like, love me a good gospel. I play song, praise and worship every morning. Good gospel playlist. Every you morning, said, wait, what? I said I love me a good gospel playlist. Girl. Oh yes. Oh, I got like three. I can do I'll that pass at them home. to you. Oh, send them. Every single morning, I play. Yeah. I blast praise and worship music every morning, and my kids be in there like. <laughs> on know, the way to school you know they like hey, you play cry? Kirk Franklin there you know you I know what makes Kirk me cry Franklin. whenever you see people doing hakas like mm -hmm. indigenous mm -hmm. the, like New Zealand yes. like, when they are doing haka dances I literally cry every it's like single chills time yes. because yeah. it is a connection to the yep. spiritual yeah. world of their ancestors and it's you. It's the way they transform when you yep. see these and so athletes do what they do. I love it. Yes. It's so yes. deeply connected to mm. God that you can feel it. You can and feel I think, it. And I think that when you do have a reverence for God and you do believe in it, it doesn't matter if someone believes in something else. Something else. Like you, you feel that. Yeah. You can feel, feel God that. everywhere. See, that's. I think that's my point with Chia too. Like when I tell him, like why I love gospel music or why I go to church or why I can go anywhere. If I, I feel God that yeah, I'm there. Exactly. Like yeah, I can feel the that. intention, the heart. And I'm like, yes, we are all on the same page here. Like yeah. we love, but the thing too is like my kids keep asking me like, mom, what is God? Is it a boy? Is it a girl? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, I don't know. But I was like, I, I find it hard to believe that God is in human form. Right. And I'm like, I truly believe that it's something that we could never even imagine. Cause I'm like, baby, mm -hmm. there's so many things in this world. Yes. Right. And if this, this energy created all of this, then it has to be something that's bigger than all of this. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're like, okay. No, it's hard to grasp. <laughs> yeah. Like but spirit and flesh us. is like, I remember for years, even in, by the time that I was, Oh my God, I don't think I've ever told you guys this story. Did I wait, tell wait, you guys this story you on? I know, not <laughs> Let me the girl tell you about you the guys. time in my many lives. I have, okay, girl. so I feel, I may, did I tell you guys the day or the moment when I did one of my good friends' um, makeup when she passed away? No. Okay, so this is like a deep story. Okay, so listeners, I've lived many lives in this 33 years. Man. So I was going to church super heavy. I would hang out with a group of my girlfriends and I kind of just started to distance myself. I started to get more into church and something was just like, I don't know, my spirit was being called to mm -hmm. just kind of hibernate yeah. for lack of better words. And um, one of my friends that I had a connection and she actually introduced me to everyone, like my kid's father, everybody. Yeah. And she went out one night and she got in a car accident and passed away. And then, but her and I had makeup in common. And so her mom was like, um, her mom was like, we want someone to do her hair and makeup so that she kind of looks the same as, as best as possible. At that time, when I was studying the Bible and going to church heavy, I didn't understand flesh and spirit. I was like, what are you guys talking about? I just, it wasn't making sense to me. I just, it just, I wasn't clicking. Yeah. But I feel like God knows that I am the, I am a, I have to experience it and feel it to really learn. And so um, I called, so all the girlfriends, they were like, Felicia, you should do it. This is like, we would get ready and go out, to like run the streets, everything mm -hmm. together. And I would do her makeup. So they're like, you have to do it. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I called my mom and I was like, mom, they're asking me to do this, but I'm like very scared. Yeah. I was like, I've never seen a dead body. I've never had somebody this close pass away for none of it. And mind you, I was like, I just started my makeup journey. So I was like, what the hell? I barely <laughs> right. know how to put it on somebody that's here. Yeah. So... 
in that moment, I remember walking into the room and seeing her body and being like just staring for a second. Mm -hmm. And that's when I understood that I was like, oh, this is your flesh. Mm -hmm. What we fall in love with is the spirit that's yeah. in you and your spirit mm -hmm. is now in this other realm. Because you had a distinct understanding that her spirit was no longer there. A hundred percent. Okay, and, yeah. and I had a, it was like, oh, this is literally a shell. Mm -hmm. Like you yeah. are cold and you are hard mm -hmm. and it, like it doesn't work anymore. But what we fell in love with is like, this was the holder of the spirit that we love. Yeah, and so I feel wild. like you can't kill spirit. Yeah. Spirit is, 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 you can't kill it. And I feel like for me, that's what God is. God is this spirit, this not a man, not a woman, not a, it's an yeah. essence. It's yeah. a, yeah. it's a feeling, you know? Yeah. So yeah, very interesting. But no, I was like, I, I don't, girl, y'all, no, listen. we got a lot to talk that about. Is a, that <laughs> is, that's no, that's right actually there. a beautiful story. Yeah. That you were able to come to that space and that realization through that tragedy brought you that clarity. No, that same yeah. for me with my sister. It was, it was, we went to, I remember, cause she got in a very horrible car accident. So my parents decided <laughs> decided that we were not allowed to see her as in me and my brothers and i was like first to of, protect you though girl what was it yeah i was 22 years old oh, okay don't tell me what to do mm -hmm. so i was like no i'm gonna like, definitely tell my 22 year old what to do <laughs> right my dad, came, in that know, instance. my dad literally came home and he was like yeah we just left the um the Aww. funeral home and uh, you guys don't need to see her and i was like First of all, if I don't see her, I'm gonna believe that she's she's faked her death and is living somewhere else. Like right. that, I, you I need to make it real. No, yes, I, yeah. that is how I connect. I'm like, now they don't want to. That's none of my business. But I'm gonna go see my right. sister. So I got in the car and I went to the funeral home. And then when I pulled up, everybody was behind me because they were worried for me. Because me and my sister were like, velcroed how I am to my family. And so I went in there. <laughs> I definitely need therapy. And I I looked at her, and I just busted out laughing. Shout oh out to the girl, because my sister was an AKA, and at the funeral home, the girl who did the makeup there was an AKA, and I was like, oh, she gave you that sisterly AKA energy, because she beat her face. <laughs> it looked so good. Her oh eyebrows God. were so bomb. And I was like, I was so happy for her, because this was the pluck your eyebrows thin era. <laughs> she was ahead of her time. <laughs> she was ahead of her time. They were. I was like, oh, my God, her hair was laid. Like, no, my sister looked good. Yeah. It didn't look like her. Cause I feel like the makeup was a little darker, but I think it was because they were trying to cover the bruises right. and stuff, yeah. and like they try to resuscitate her. So there was just a lot happening. Yeah, but she looked really beautiful. We still decided to do a closed casket, but me looking at her, it was so weird because it was like that's my sister, but it's that's not her. It's yeah. not her. I, I did not think she was in the room at all. I low key be feeling. I felt yeah. a little bamboozled. I'm like, hold up, yes. this ain't even really you. Yeah, like, so it feels mm. weird. I was that's why I kept looking at her, oh, and I'm like. Yeah. I kept telling, I was like, did she fake her death? Is this like a dummy? Like, it I watched way too like much that. TV. It felt very weird, but I never, to this day, I'm telling you, I used to have these thoughts that she was still alive all the time. Mm -hmm. Now I realize I think that was her spirit visiting is. me. A hundred percent. But that's the thing. Right. I saw her body and I never thought that was her. And I've never felt like she's left me. It's just yeah. the physical that trips me up. I literally tried to call her the other day and I was like, oh, you are tripping. Mm -hmm. Like I was in a store like, oh my God, I gotta call my sister because something was funny. And I was like, why do I not sometimes remember that she's dead? Because I feel her all the time. Do you talk to her? Like, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like a crazy person. Girl, I'll be in the kitchen. No, that's like not Rebecca. crazy. Thing. Get your kids. I'm talking about my, my children. I'm like, if you don't tell your niece, to stop getting on my nerves today. Look. <laughs> or like all the things. I talk to her all the time. Don't, can you please not say that that's crazy? Because it's not crazy. Okay, at all. you're right. It's not no, it's not. I, it's not. Yeah, it's we don't. Yeah. Crazy. yeah, no. No, it's not. It's very real. Yeah. But also, Amira makes me feel like the most that that is my sister mm -hmm. so it is very strange but whenever i'm with her i feel like i'm with my sister and i accidentally call her rebecca all the time mm -hmm. it is my whole family does that's how peace and natalie are i'm really? like peace and i'm talking to my sister <laughs> yeah it's interesting yeah. how it all like intertwines mm -hmm. cody lynn the space you're making i, I have nothing to contribute <laughs> Oh, are you having a moment i mean i don't know what i'm having because none of this the things that you're saying is bad mm -hmm. i think I'm just, and I also know our listener question that's coming up, oh, and so I'm just, okay. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, I, uh, uh, read the question, baby. Read yeah. the question. So yeah, listeners, thanks for your questions. Okay, podcasts <laughs> with an podcasts S. with an S. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the question. My dad recently passed, and I'm having a hard time explaining to my child that her grandpa is no longer here, partly because I'm still grieving and questioning my faith in the process. What is the right way to talk to my child about death as well as faith? At the same time, I'm trying to figure it out on my own. Uh, interestingly, right. I have not had to talk to my children about death with someone they've met. Hmm. My father passed away before they uh, were born, before they were created. <laughs> and so we talk about death 
with, I mean, they, they can't see people that they know, like that other people have, right? Other people have grandparents or whatever. And so they have asked about, you know, my dad, their grandfather. And so we just talk about it like hella straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so like, I feel like you guys are like waiting for me to cry. You, um, it's okay. It's, no, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to as much as when you were talking about the bodies. Yeah. yeah. And I was thinking about like holding my dad's hand. Mm. So yeah, that like made me want to cry, but not, you know what I mean? It wasn't even yeah. relevant. Wait, was, did you space, hold your dad's space. hand as he passed? No, but after, for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. And and it's and I did the same thing with my grandfather, so it's like I don't know. I'm like, is that my thing? Like I just I don't know something Maybe. about, and it's not everything that you're saying. I agree with in terms of like spirit and mm -hmm. flesh. There's just something for me that's like a last. I think sure. it's me kind of like not being afraid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so anyway, so I don't know why that's making me cry. I don't know because, because it's, it's your yeah, dad. no, it's real. Yeah. It's real, it's friend. Dad, friend. Yeah. This is oh, we love you, Cody. Okay, well, Any we'll Hoosiers. On. Good luck, sis. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, man. But that, but that is real. And I think, you know, I think what you said is actually true. It's I'm not scared. Yeah. I'm not scared to, uh, to, to step into it and acknowledge that I've experienced a lot of death in my life from very young age Same. to recently. So, like, I, 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 I have this concept of death. And I think even to relate it back to this question is that it's okay to, like, work through it in real time yeah. and to be honest about how that changes, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. with your children. Like, I think it's important for your children to see you human as well. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't have all the answers. I am sad today. I don't know how to be strong today. That's what death is about. Yeah. You know, that's it, grieving is forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom recently in one week, in, in fact, in this past week, it was the death anniversary of her sister, one of her best friends, and her sister's birthday, and one of our other friends. Like, Aww. February for my mom so is like, she horrible. hates the month of February. I didn't know your mom's February. sister passed away. Oh, my mom's sister passed away suddenly. It was very tragic. Um, and to know that, like, even, I mean, my mom will cry thinking about her mother who died in 1995 yeah. to this That's day. That's mama. You know, like, it, yeah. it, grief is forever. Yeah. And yeah. so I think understanding the process, I think, of what, what you believe in and how, how it shows up mm -hmm. is it changes. It can change. Yeah. 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 Um, and so I just would just advise whoever this person is, the listener, to just, I don't be, think honest. Do, to just yeah. be honest with your feelings and allow your children to understand that it is a process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't I, think there's I, any sure. right or wrong way. I am never going to get over my sister dying. So there's that. I don't think you'll ever get over your father dying. Yeah, no. I always say that losing someone you love is like losing a limb. You just kind of like, you're never going to wake up and 100%. not look down like, oh, my arm's missing. But then you're like, Okay, my arm's missing, but I got to get up. I yeah, got to keep gotta going. Learn, I got to yeah. keep going. So you just kind of learn to live without it, but you don't ever, like, get over it, it if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? You're just going to have good days and bad days. And it's, it is definitely a journey. And like you said, be honest about all things with your children so they're able to realize the feelings that they have as an adult is normal. Like, it's just good and bad days. Mm -hmm. Good and bad days. Let's try to find something positive to end on. That is positive. Is Life, is, there's nothing, I don't think there's anything negative about that. I think it's, that's the problem. It's beautiful. Like, there's just it's, good and bad days. Yeah, like, I agree. There's, there's, there's beauty in that. And all the sadness that we have is just all the love that we had. Word. Like, yes. Yeah. I will say, yep. Felicia and Kariga Bailey um, say that grief is love with nowhere to go. Yeah, there so it if is. if that's what you're feeling, then you're feeling like love intensely and mm -hmm. you want to put it somewhere, you want to give it to that person yep. and you can't do it in the way they're used to. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. finding other outlets, whether it's talking to them or thinking about them or sharing them with someone that you love. On you a know, podcast. This is how <laughs> I get over my grief. I'll share this by loving you all. The way I love you all intensely and it's how I loved my sister. Mm -hmm. So people that I feel a deep connection. Now that, Nope, no, I'm not joking. <laughs> <She's saying laughs> joke. Put it back down. And with that, we're, like, <laughs> and with that <laughs> we're out. <laughs> That's, That's a wrap, folks. Mama's we love did. you too, Ashley. <laughs> love you. For all things The Mama's Den, you can find us on IG at The Mama's Den Podcast. Also, feel free to show us some love on our socials. And we love y'all. We love you.